Rock and Fight fans, thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Knuckle Up with yours truly, Mike Orr. My man Cedric Ben in the den will be joining us very, very soon. Uh, he's just uh, running a little bit late, guys. Uh, so today we're going to continue on with talking about some uh, wonderful prospects here. And uh, we're not we're not going to continue over to the UK. We're going to start over here. Uh, he now resides out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, definitely a highly decorated amateur that I want to talk about. And uh, guys, it's Carlos Adams. I don't know if you've heard of this kid, but definitely one to watch. Uh, he hasn't been in the ring uh, since December the 5th of last year. But I do want to just touch base here, man. The kid is 21 and 1 with 16 knockouts. Uh, in the middleweight division, uh, he's 28 years old. He stands 5'11 with a 73-inch reach. Um, you know, originally from Dominican Republic, uh, moved to Washington Heights. Uh, since training and uh, turning pro, uh, he's decided to uh, move over to Las Vegas, Nevada, where he trains now. He's ranked one out of 20 in Dominican Republic, and he's ranked four out of 1,497 in the world. And he's coming off of a Wonderful majority decision win over Sergey Derevchenko uh, back December the 5th, 2021, guys. If you haven't uh, had a chance to see that fight, you definitely don't want to watch it. Uh, this kid, man, you know, is a Dominican professional boxer who challenged for the WBO interim light middleweight title in 2019. At regional level, he held the WBC, NABF, and WBO, NABO light middleweight titles between 2018 and 2019. Adams represented the Dominican Republic in the World Series of Boxing between 2014 and 2015, accumulating a 4-2 and two record. Uh, he made his professional debut July 20, uh, 2015, defeating Jeff Surfront by unanimous decision after four rounds. Adam won the vacant WBA um, Fedekarbi uh, welterweight title in his seventh bout, uh, beating Kelly Figura. Uh, he won another vacant title in his next fight, defeating Patrick Lopez with a fourth-round technical knockout for the WBA uh, Federline title. Uh, in July of 2017, he defeated welterweight contendo Carlos Molina by unanimous decision, uh, putting up scores of 110 to 98, 110 to 98, and 109 to 99. After 11 rounds, Adams put on a dominant performance, dropping Molina in round two and outclassing him through the rest of the fight. However, the fight ended. Uh, Ended a 10-fight knockout streak for Adams. On November, Adams was scheduled to face Frank Rojas uh, in a welterweight bout as part of the 96 WBA convention in Medellin. But the bout was called off after he failed to make weight. So, guys, be on the lookout for this kid, man. Carlos Adams, you know, junior, middle, junior middleweight contender. You know, is pumped to begin the next chapter of his career. You know, used to be promoted, was previously promoted by Top Rank and uh, trained by Robert Garcia. No, yes, Robert Garcia, actually. Uh, and he's now started his career under the Premier Boxing Champions banner. Uh, you know, he and has moved to Las Vegas since then and now is training under uh, Ismail Salas now at the Top Rank gym. Uh, PBC has all of the major junior middleweight titles under their banner, with Jamal Charlo holding the WBA, IBF, WBC titles, Castano holding WBO, and so on and so on. So this is one of the reasons why he decided that he needed to make the jump from top rank to PBC because he figured there was more shots at the belts over there and was the reason why he made that jump. Now, talking a bit about this kid's backstory... Uh, he's got a, he's got a real great uh, real great story here, and uh, honestly, I couldn't believe how many how many siblings this guy has. Uh, you know, he successfully transi transitioned from super welter to middleweight. The hard hitting boxer from Dominican is hot on a trail of world title as he climbs the rankings. You know, Carlos Adams was the thirty third child born of thirty five in Dominican Republic, only twelve of whom were girls. He came from humble beginnings uh, where not everyone lived in the same house at the same time. There were unusual, you know, unusually seven of us there at once, and everyone had to work hard. But that wasn't enough to keep him occupied and out of trouble. It is primarily the, uh, for that reason that a 12-year-old Adams was encouraged by an older brother, Angel Santiago Adams, to enter a boxing gym. 
His brother was a former boxer who never made it. He suffered several damaged broken bones in his hands in a motorcycle accident. His brother was always looking out for him like a father. And since he could no longer compete in boxing, he became motivated to make it happen for him. Adams went 273 and 7 as an amateur, earning gold medals at the 2012 Pan Am Youth Championships, the 2012 Dominican Republic National Championships, the 2013 Bolivian Games, the 2013 World Amateur Champions in Kazakhstan, the 2015 Jose Cheo Ponte Tournament in Puerto Rico. Uh, he's a very good amateur record. Uh, he's represented the Dominican Republic in the World Series of Boxing. And, you know, he's nicknamed Cabello Bronco because he's considered to be strong and fast like a horse. Uh, beginning with that four-round unanimous over previous unbeaten Jeff Safrant in July of 2015, um, Adams won his first six professional fights during a span that included three of five stoppages ending in the first round. The year's run covered three consecutive first-round knockouts by Adams with those over previous unbeaten uh, Lozano, uh, Cesaris, and, you know, in 2016, the switch hitting Adams stopped all four rivals in four rounds or less, including fourth-round TKO of 2000 and 2004 Venezuelan Olympian Patrick Lopez in April and December's first-round knockout Panama's John Rotentera, who entered at 13-3-1 with 10 KOs. At that point, already 10 and 0, while competing between 146 and a half and 149 and a half, Adams was more impressive in 2017 with successive victory, victories by second round TKO over Venezuelan Olympian Juan Carlos Prada in February. A one knockdown, near shout out, 11 round unanimous decision over IBF 154 champion Carlos Molina in July, and a six round stoppage of hammer fisted Venezuelan uh, Adrian Perez in November. Uh, you want to talk about this guy? Yes. Let's let's yeah. talk about him, man. I, I I've just broke it down. He is the thirty third of thirty five siblings. Okay, thirty three out of thirty five, buddy. Somebody somebody's dad was busy, man. You know what I'm 33 saying? Thirty three out of thirty five. Wow. And thirty five siblings. Is, is he the uh, only no, boxer out of the crew? Nope, nope. But there is out of that thirty five only twelve girls, and his older brother was a boxer. Uh, got into a motorcycle accident and unfortunately uh, broke his hands uh, severely, was unable to compete. So since he was, you know, guiding his younger brother, he decided to bring him into boxing. And 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 now with an amateur record of 274 wins and seven losses. Mm. What um, so, he's definitely uh, 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 taken um... – like he took that that amateur style. He doesn't really didn't really bring that to the pros because he's a straight brawler. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Hard hitting switch hitter, brawler beast. They call him. What's his record <laughs> again? Him, What's his record? His record right now. He's sporting a twenty one and one with sixteen knockouts, uh, 5'11", 73 inch reach. Man, um, you know, like I said, I was reading some of the fights and when they happen. You know, some of the names this guy's taken out. This is that what, you know, what weight class? What weight class? Um, you know, he's he's started off as middle. Um, you know, he's he's in the middleweight division, you know, but he's has fought at 147. He's fought at 140, you know, he's fought at 147, he's fought in the 150s, 155, 156. He's been up there, he's fluctuating, but his last fight was against Sir, uh, Sir, Sergey Derevchenko, and uh he fought at 160 pounds in that one. So, you know, he's uh, and he won that fight, uh, yeah, yeah. He's the only fight he's ever lost was against Pat, uh, against Patrick uh, Texiera, uh, back in November the 30th of 2019, and that one was at uh, yeah, that's, that's, the Las fight, Vegas. Uh, that's the fight that I that I got on my highlights right now. It was, it was a back and forth, both of them are, are uh, both of them are leaking to share is actually leaking even more, but um, okay. it was scored, it was scored, um. Okay, it was scored 111, 116, 113, 114, and 113, 114. Yeah. And Adams was down in round seven. Uh unanimous decision. It's the only loss. It's the only loss on, on his uh, on his record, man. You know, he's taken out the likes of um, you know, Carlos Molina. He's taken mm-hmm. out uh Alejandro Barrera, you know, he's taken out Connolly, Juan Rez, uh, he's fought Patrick Day. Uh he was actually the second 
last fight of Patrick Day's life and career. Uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, no, he's he's definitely he's he's taking out some uh, some guys here, man. He's fought some great competition, and I can't wait to see. And this he's team out, he's, he's twenty eight years old. Twenty eight years old, man. Yeah, you got to you got to um, put the. So he he was rejuvenated, right? And he made his middleweight debut on December the fifth, twenty twenty one, and he did it again against the toughest opponent of his career and one of the toughest in boxing period. Sergey Durovchenko in a Showtime pay-per-view at Staples Center in Los Angeles. Adams simply shined, overcoming a stiff challenge from the former world title challenger with a 10-round majority decision. Uh, one, you know, The one judge scored about even at 95-95, while the other two scored it for Adams 96-94 and 97-93. So, you know, both 154. He dominates at both 154 and 160. So whatever they give him the opportunity to fight for a championship is where he's going to go. And the reason for leaving top rank and being trained by Robert Garcia to make the jump to PVC or P, sorry, PVC, PBC, uh, and, you know, working with Ismail, Ismail Salas, um, he just felt that more opportunities for the belts were over in PBC, man. He felt that it was much easier uh, to, to get what he wanted over there. So, you know, because PBC has all the major junior middleweight titles under their yeah, belt. You got to go, you gotta go you where you get the most competition and um, not the most competition, but the best the best fights for the most amount of money. And so whatever, you know, different promotions have, uh, <clears throat> like, for example, like you said, PBC, they have a lot of the, most of the 147s and and, and uh, most of the heavyweights too. Um, and a couple and a couple of the other divisions, they're, they're gaining a lot of, a lot of other guys too. Um so we'll see. We'll see. When when's his next fight? Is he even his next fight scheduled? It's not scheduled yet, man. But I'm thinking we're gonna see him real soon because honestly, it hasn't been since December. He hasn't been out since December. His last fight against Durovchenko, majority decision. Uh, you know, his only loss is to Textira. And you know, I can't wait to see this guy. PBC, they gotta really get this kid out there and get him on on you know on these events, man. This kid can definitely be wearing a belt, you know. Great brawler, good IQ in the ring, man. Definitely can fight. You know he can hold his own. I know you're watching those highlights as, as I'm talking right now. He's definitely coming forward. Like he keeps his hands up. He's not he's not trying to make it a secret what he's trying to do. He no, man, that he's seeking destroy, he's, um, seek and destroy mentality. He definitely, definitely. He's got that uh when did he turn pro? Because uh, Carl's mentioned he's 28, no spring chicken. What, what when did he turn pro? His pro debut is 2015 07 2015. So he has, he's only been pro for seven years. So I mean, he he, he probably had a late start, even though he's he's old in age. Um, professional experience, he only has seven years. So yeah. But he, he fought the, he fought the amateurs a long time, right? Like to rack up 274 wins and seven losses. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Lomachenko, Lomachenko has 400, 400 amateur <laughs> fights for the team, bro. So it all depends. It all depends how you know. And and those are three rounds. It's not like they're they're wars. But I don't know. I, I haven't seen any of uh, Carlos's uh, Adams amateur fights. But if he fought like this in the amateur, did he win anything as amateur? Yes, yes, he did. He won. He won quite a few as amateur, man. Okay, um, okay, okay. He's uh, so he won um, as an amateur. He won. Uh, what was it? Oh man. <laughs> Honestly, there's just too. There's too many. There's too many to even. Like. Se- yeah, I understand. Carl saying seven years in the pro game is a long time. Yeah, it is. And sorry, r- remind me of his record again. How many fights does he have? Twenty-one and one. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Knockouts. So by the time he's what twenty-eight right now, five years would be thirty-three. He'll get another, you know, six, seven fights. Yeah, yeah, he's he's right there. He's so, right so there. As, so as an amateur, he earned gold medals at the 2012 Pan Am Youth Championships, 2012 Dominican Republic Youth National Championships, 2013 Bolivian Games, 2013 World Amateur Championships in Kazakhstan, 2015 Jose Cheo Aponte Tournament in uh, Puerto Rico. You know, he had a very good rear. He was in the World Series of Boxing. Uh, he went, I believe it was 4-2 and two in that. So, you know, the guy has a lot of accolades as a, you know, amateur. So... It's it's no no surprise that he's gonna come in here and whoop some ass as a <laughs> as a pro, right? Mm. So honestly, guys, you heard it here. Watch out for this kid. Hope to see him real soon. Shout out to Carl dropping all the shout out. 
Shout out to Carl from Last Bell Boxing Club, Boxing Club, Boxing yeah. Show every Thursday, uh, oh, 2, 2 p.m. Canadian time for all the Canadians that want to make sure to listen to their show. Also, shout out to Lucky Gray. What up, Sanchez? Yeah. For what, up, in. what up, Sanchez? Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> shout out to all our wonderful fans watching around the world. You know what it is, man. Happy hump day. I hope the rest of your day is just as wonderful and humptastic as ours. We will see you tomorrow. Same time, same channel. If you haven't yet, hit up talkandfight.com. Hit that subscribe, like, and share, and tell all your friends. And we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Until then, knuckle up. Mm-hmm. <laughs>